Morning everybody, Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. The time is wrong, it is now 7.40 and it was 26 degrees at 7 o'clock this morning and outside and 49 inside. That is right, 49 degrees inside. Because we had a period of warmer days we had the wood stove out and now it's time to get it going. The greenhouse is 35 so 26 out and 35 in a greenhouse, uh, still above freezing, the plants are alive, and that's a pretty good success considering it's not even fully insulated yet or sealed off. So, let me get back to that fire. Uh, by the way, barometric pressure is high. My little uh, antique indicator here, although it's really old, the needle never goes higher than stormy, so I think I need to calibrate it. but. Um, that's as high as I've seen it in a long time. So, pressure is rising. Looks like we're in for some sunny days. That's good solar power. Good afternoon, everybody. There's Chris. Hey, guys. Chris is working on restacking the wood pile because we have discovered a certain need for <laughs> certain types of wood over others. Yep. And, yeah, the uh, wood pile is starting to fall. Yeah, well, the chickens had made a mess of it. Yeah, Chris I, did a good job, but then the chickens trashed it. Yeah, I just so. don't. I just didn't like the risk of someone getting hurt this way. And this, by the way, is what I'm primarily heating the house with. The pallet wood right now is beautiful. I shouldn't say that out loud, and everybody will be fighting for us for pallet wood, right? The pallet wood is beautiful for heating because a lot of this is oak, heavy, heavy duty. Um wood I mean that is so good a lot of people complain that we had too many pallets in the in the beginning and now I'm wishing we had more because um, when I cut them up for using for siding and projects and whatever else all the bits and pieces get chopped up by Chris into firewood and oh it's great look here it's all through there pieces of pallet wood so, I mean, we have a few pieces like this that are cured oh yeah but not, not many, many whoops sorry yeah, we've got some good cured wood, which you're hopefully putting aside for oh, me, yeah? yeah. Good. Chris is sorting out what's cured. Yep. Um, we have a serious lack of cured firewood. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of fresh cut. We have probably years worth of burning in fresh cut wood. Yeah. So next year we'll be good. But this year, we're hurting. Um, well, we do have the pallet wood, and we also have some dead standing trees that I'm going to go harvest. Yep. So we're not going to suffer. But it's just that we don't have it cut and stacked. So Chris is reorganizing. And again, the chickens had made a mess of it. And uh, I'll show you what else is going on around here today. It's been a slower day, but uh, I'll take you around the homestead. Probably got a lot bigger too. So our chickens are safely protected by a electric fence controller, which is blinking and sounds very ominous and dangerous when it charges up. You can hear the capacitor charge. A high-pitched whining sound. Yeah, I can hear that whistling. So we should be good. Um, also, I was in tractor supply and right for right now I have a strand of wire going across the door and I've asked Melanie and Chris to be very, very careful to shut off the fence controller in the uh, when, you, when you go in. And just be careful not to trip on the wire for now. And I have the uh, insulators now that go on the uh, fence of the gate. So now we can properly wire that up and put the hot wires on the gate too. So in case anything gets over that, then they will uh, hit the wire on the gate and will not get into the birds. Also, that way I can el eliminate this wire and any tripping hazard. And then all you do is shut off the fence controller to prevent possible shocks and then open the gate and the wire will flex open and closed with the gate. So that's good. The birds are safe and I am very confident in my electric fence. I, somebody in the comments said that electric fence won't stop raccoons, but I've never lost a bird to any predators at all when an electric fence system was in place and functioning. So I feel very confident in the electric fence. I mean, they've used it for years and years and uh, other farms and homesteads use them. So 
I feel good about it. Hey, everybody. Oops, I scared him. The fishies are eating. They're all over the top. The happy little fishies. Some of them are really pretty. They're all comfortable with their new home. And they're all swimming around happily in there. Now I have the water pump and most of the plumbing and hardware I need to start the aquaponics. I just have to get power in here. And uh, it's a lot of fishies, huh? I just have to get power in here, solar batteries and a solar panel and charge controller and get it hooked up and get it going. But for now, they're happy swimming around. All I gotta do is get an aerator in here though for now. For that many fish, I figure I have a max of a, a week total before I really have to worry about anything. So every once in a while I see one on the side just hanging around and I think there's something wrong with it, but they're, um, I guess they just do that. I thought one was dead one day and I went up, reached out to it and scared it. <laughs> but they also have been munching on something on the sides of the container too, of the water tank. So I know they eat algae in nature from what I've understood from studies. So I guess we'll find out uh, what all they like with time. Well guys, there's the fish. There's the big one in the middle. That was one of our first fish. He looks huge now. I don't know what he's eating, but he's huge in there. I can't imagine the fish growing up that fast just because they've been let out to freedom in a bigger tank. But that is a big, big fish right now. I don't remember it being that big. So I can't think, you know, it's definitely not eating its, its other fish in there, but it's getting big. I have heard that fish will grow to fit the size of the tank, and I have been trying to feed them heavily. Uh, to make them grow up fast. So, we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to observe what they eat uh, in a few minutes here so I know how much to feed them. I'm still learning in there. I'm learning about the fish and they're learning about me. Hey everybody, sitting back in my truck camper, my old survival truck camper, back on wheels again. Uh, you guys may have seen the accident when it crashed to the ground and then a recovery as we put it up on a trailer which it now stays on permanently then it's now my survival camper and my little getaway again I'm out here just cleaning up and put some things away um, Melanie and I had a survival hike this weekend we took our survival gear and we headed out into the hills and we hiked for a day and then we made camp and we stayed out in a tent though because it was cold. It was really cold. So we packed a tent with us. We uh, stayed out overnight in the woods and uh, we had a really good time. Melanie is absolutely the perfect match for me. She really is amazing. Um, she, We started out with two friends who joined us on a hike uh, but they were not staying overnight. They uh, refused. <laughs> Maybe smartly so to uh, stay with us but at lunchtime we um, all got out our, our camp stoves and uh, survival fire starting capabilities and I said forget this you know we've been hiking all day I want to have lunch and I got out a cigarette lighter <laughs> okay and I failed to start a fire now I've done a lot of fi fire starting uh, videos before with various survival fire starting methods and things and uh, the wood was just too wet and I didn't pack any tinder in with me into the woods uh, although I have no excuse because <laughs> thanks to mom I've got some of the best in the world fire starting tinder dryer lint which has no weight and is going into my bug out bag right now okay thanks mom dumb of me not to take it with me anyway the the uh, dryer lint makes some of the awesome, some of the most awesome uh, fire starting tinder that you can find. So there it is. I didn't have any tinder with me. I didn't expect to find uh, conditions so wet, although I know better. And uh, sometimes we go in overconfident. But 
although the rest of us failed at making fire, which we needed to provide our meals, Melanie, growing up in the mountains and in the country in the Philippines, showed us all up by taking a branch and carving it and shaving it with her favorite knife, which is also my favorite knife. I have to get myself one now because I gave her my favorite knife. And she made shavings on a stick of, you know, the inside dry wood. She made super fine shavings out of this, and she started to fire with a magnesium fire starter. I couldn't do it with a, a cigarette lighter. So Melanie showed me up. I will admit this publicly and on camera, and I am very proud of her. She did a good job. So we had our lunch and our coffee, and then uh, our friends left in the afternoon after we showed them some of our... Uh, some of our th things and our survival gear and some of our, uh, the way we build shelters. They left and then we headed off and uh, found a place to set up camp. And the um, thing is, I had injured my shoulder on something else previously, so that night I didn't sleep. Although, we were mega comfortable out there in that tent. We were really, really comfortable. Um, I didn't sleep because of the pain, and I, I gave Melanie my only aspirin. Uh, she sadly didn't uh, drink enough water that day, so she had a headache. So, um, I'm learning to pack more than uh, one supply of aspirin when you're with more than one, uh, you know, when you're with multiple people. So, um, yeah, it's good. You learn every time you go out, you learn something new. Anyway, uh, we had a great time, and I won't go into too much and elaborate on it too much because it's all on my uh, tactical channel. TR, Tech Tactical, and Survival. Uh, check out the link in the comments below, the video description, and if I remember, I'll put it right here in the corner. Right, right here. So, TR, Tech Tactical, and Survival. I shouldn't say it so fast. TR, Tech, Tactical, and Survival. And that's where you can see where Melanie and I had a great time out in the forest and uh, spent the night out in 30 degree weather. 32 degree, I think it was. 30, 32 degree. <laughs> And um, we had a really good time, and Melanie told us some stories. I caught some of that on video for y'all. So go on and check it out over on the Tactical Channel. And uh, here's some of Melanie's past and her, her skills growing up. And uh, she was really excited. Uh, she, we were cold, obviously, but she was really excited and having a blast. Um, she kept saying again how she never thought she would use those skills that she learned growing up and she was so happy to be able to use those skills in the real world I mean we didn't have fire we didn't have food or uh, warm water and we were using um, creek water for cooking and drinking it was unfiltered but clean but unfiltered creek water so we had to boil it to drink it anyway I mean we did have straw water filters but that's just no good for cooking so uh, go on and check that out. And uh, But anyway, I didn't sleep that night because of all the pain in my shoulder. And then um, we got in Sunday night and we didn't have the wood stove going for a week. So um, the place was really cold. And uh, we, well, we had warm, warm days for a week. We had 80 degree weather. That was insane. Not complaining. That was great. But, um, while we were out hiking and in the forest and stuff, the weather took a dump, and uh, it got cold. So anyway, last night, without having any heat in the home, I didn't sleep again. So today I'm feeling a little bit, uh, well, a little bit weak, so I'm taking it slower. So you won't see any projects or constructions or anything major. Just putting things away, cleaning up. Melanie's in the house baking. I might take you in and show you around what she's up to. She's like a happy bird, singing and chirping, and flittering around doing her work and just really happy i mean she's just really cheery so i'll take you in and show the show you what she's up to when i'm done here uh you know putting my stuff away and sorting things out we uh, we also covered a lot of really cool new products so check that out on the tactical channel in the coming days and weeks and if you haven't done so please do subscribe uh to the channel well i'm gonna finish up here and then go see Melanie and uh, see what she's up to in the tiny house on wheels. Talk to you guys in a little bit. Hi Melanie. Hello. What have we been doing in here today? Cooking day. Cooking what? Cooking day. Cooking day? Yes. Ah, okay. I didn't understand what you meant. So we've got here 
homemade tortillas. Mm -hmm. We've got here, what is this? Uh, tuna casserole. Tuna casserole. Mm -hmm. All right, what do we got going on over here? This is spaghetti sauce. Spaghetti sauce. Melanie makes her own spaghetti sauce. Actually, she takes, if she does, like I just bought her a can the other day, and she makes it better. Yeah, just added fresh tomato. We still have tomatoes? Yeah. Look at that. Isn't that nice? So Melanie is, uh, she has been making all of her own sauces, but we're running low. Um, so I bought her a can of sauce, and she's, oh, I don't even want to look at that. Mm -hmm. That's better to leave her to her stuff. Um, she made cookies today, and um, yes. on the table, and what's this stuff here? Not just uh, leftover rice. Oh, okay. So Melanie has been, this is baking day for Melanie in the okay. tiny house on wheels. Well, there is a monster cookie, but underneath the monster cookie there is a butterfly cookie. <laughs> and down there is poppy seed cookies that are very, very good. I know because she let me have one already. Good stuff. Melanie is amazing in the kitchen and everywhere. Thank you, Melanie. You're welcome. Don't look my kitchen, SMS. Well, that happens when you've been baking as much as you did today. Mm 